These two cameras might look very similar, but I assure you, the difference is night and day. If you're looking for a wired 2K outdoor camera that has remarkable nighttime color vision, you're in the right place. Hello, I'm Wander001, and this is my review of the TP-Link Tapo C325WB. I'll start things off by stating that TP-Link did reach out to me and provide me with the C325WB for the purposes of doing a review. But aside from that, they have no input as to how this review goes. Let's start off with some general specifications of this camera. You are looking at a weatherproof rating of IP66, as you would expect for something that's going to be outside all the time. It also has an operating temperature of negative four degrees Fahrenheit up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit and with a humidity ratio of 10% to 90%. I myself have been able to test this in rain quite frequently since I had a bout of rain these last couple of days, as well as up to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Data temperatures are accurate and it remains functional. General body we're going to look at is 5.85 by 5.43 by 3.56. It is a remarkably small camera for everything that you're getting in here. One of the big differences that you're gonna notice with this particular outdoor camera compared to others is the exterior Wi-Fi antenna. So with these, you'll notice there is a limitation into how far you can move them, but having the Wi-Fi antennas on the outside of the camera allows the body of the camera to remain very small and compact, but also gives you the opportunity to move these so that they can face your Wi-Fi router to get you better signal for this. So while they might look a little odd if you've never seen something like this before, I assure you they serve a very good purpose having them on the exterior. Speaking of Wi-Fi, this particular camera uses the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum. So this is not a five gigahertz spectrum camera. However, what that means is with the antennas on the outside and 2.4 gigahertz, you're going to have further range with this. You're not gonna have the faster speeds of five gigahertz. However, even with the 2K resolution of this camera, I assure you 2.4 is more than enough to handle what this camera is putting out. Let's move on to the front of our camera and take a look at what we have going on here. You will notice at the top, there is a difference compared to the other TP-Link camera that I have reviewed in the past review over there in the corner. This is the microphone. They have moved the microphone to the front of the camera that allows it to pick up audio much easier. When it was underneath, yeah, if the camera was angled slightly weird, it wouldn't pick up audio as well. Having it front and center where the camera lens is facing allows us to pick up audio much better. Coming down, there is a lip or channel around the camera lens that helps to keep water from dripping on it because it will drip along the sides and help keep the lens free of any debris. Speaking of our lens, we are looking at a 2K QHD 4MP resolution with a viewing angle of 127 degrees, meaning this is gonna show you a lot more than your basic cameras would, as well as having a focal length of 4.58 millimeters. The big trick that this lens does, thanks to the sensor and some smarts in the camera is that it has colored night vision. When I say colored night vision, I mean ridiculous colored night vision, as you saw at the beginning. With as little as 0 0.0005 lux, which they're calling a moonless night, you can have colored night vision. For example, of what lux is considered, right now my current setup is 227 lux. So that's from two side lamps that I have going. Just think about that. What you're seeing now is over 227 lux. This can give you colored night vision at 0 0.005 lux without the assistance of the LEDs. If you have the LEDs, then it doesn't matter because that's gonna send out its own light. Now, sadly, when I was filming this, I was in a lunar phase of a full moon. However, I left this in my studio on and my studio, when I'm not in here, has zero lights because there are no exterior facing windows. And as you can see here, you get a surprising amount of actual color and detail from this camera just with what it's picking up, which is almost nothing. If you throw in the use of the LEDs on here, your picture quality improves immensely. However, it is not using the LEDs to flood the area in front of it. It's merely giving enough ambient light so that the image sensor and processor can enhance the color. That's the big difference between this camera and something like a floodlight camera. A floodlight camera throws out LEDs and it gives you night vision, 
but that night vision is only up to a radius as to as far as the LEDs go. This camera doesn't have that problem. It is merely putting out enough ambient light that the internal image sensor and processing enhances the video quality. That is the big difference between this and a basic floodlight camera. And I know that is very difficult to appreciate in this video as I'm talking about it, but even compared to previous Tapo cameras, this is leaps and bounds above and beyond what those were capable of. And that really is the key selling factor of this camera is that color night vision, that color clarity that you get. But coming back to the front of our camera face here, I did mention that there are two LEDs on either side, but these LEDs are all it has. There are no IR lights on this at all. It just uses ambient light around it or these LEDs to give it enough ambient light to do what it needs to do. Right up front there at the bottom is our LED status light, which will let you know what the camera is up to, whether it's on, whether it's recording, whether it's being viewed remotely. Coming to the bottom of our camera, you'll notice that we have our speaker right there. Again, having the speaker on the bottom of the camera is not detrimental in any way, shape or form that allows the speaker to when angled like this to be heard much better as well as this allows for not having to have an extra layer over the speaker to keep water from getting in there so if it was on the top you'd have to have that underneath you don't have to have that so you get better audio quality from this which we'll hear a little later we also have our micro sd card and sync slash reset panel. Now, this is one of the things that I do like that TP-Link does for the Tapo line. They have this locked down. You need a glasses screwdriver in order to open this up. So if for whatever reason, you are only locally storing to the camera itself, somebody can't just come along, pop that open and pull the SD card out. They need a screwdriver. So there's some forethought that needs to happen in order to get into here. If you are choosing to do local storage, the camera is compatible with up to a 512 gigabyte card, which is ridiculous. You will pretty much never run out of storage. And even if you do, you have the ability to overwrite older video files. If we come around to the back of the camera, there's nothing really going on back here except for some information. Your serial number is down there. You'll notice your mounting solution is a plastic ball joint. So there is some versatility into how you get this where you'd like, and you can lock it down simply by screwing that down and it holds things into place. You have your mounting panel built right in, as you can see, three screw holes. And then for your cable, you have a little bit that you can feed right there and then have that flush, which is very important because this is a wired camera. You're getting this because you want wired solution. Well, you've got this one cable that comes out the back and then pigtails into two different cable edges. Here you have your power cable right there. So you've got a little rubberized gasket that you get with this camera that you'll have to manually put in place to help make that watertight. But you also have a connection for ethernet. So you could power this device and connect it however you like. Now the power cable itself is just shy of being 10 feet long. So for some that might be perfectly fine, but if your power outlet is further away than where you'd like to actually mount your camera, you might run into a problem with this because 10 feet could be a little too short for you. Speaking of the power brick, here we have, this is the US version and it is chunky. And if you have an outdoor electrical outlet with a cover over it, this will prevent you from actually closing that outlet. It is not terrible. Uh, I have not had any issues really with water getting in, even with my outlet cover slightly ajar, but this is a chunky plug and you need to be aware of that for planning. So I mentioned that there's a little O-ring right there to help water from getting into your electrical gear, but you do get a few other things with the camera and we're just gonna go through that really quick. So you get a mounting guide sticker, which I always like with TP products. You also have your mounting hardware, so three screws and three wall anchors. You also have a singular plastic bag that the rubber gasket for your electrical came in. I really wish that they would change this because you could put it in with this bag. I do understand that keeping them separate for people to understand that this is not part of this. And what this is, this is your weather protection for your power over ethernet cable. You would slip things in here, close them up, and then it would become waterproof and you wouldn't have to worry. But those are the things that you get with the camera. Now this is a smart camera, so guess what? That means there is a setup process. The Tapo brand camera, even though it is a subsidiary of TP-Link, it actually uses a different application. So if you have other TP products that utilize the CASA application, this actually has a designated Tapo application, which you'll need to use in order to set this up. But let me show you what the setup process for this was like. This will be setup of the Tapo C32 5WB. 
First things first, if you haven't done so already, you're gonna download the Tapo application. You will then come up to the plus sign in the upper right-hand corner, and you are going to find your Tapo camera. So we're just gonna hunt through here until we locate our camera. I do like how they broke this out. Notice that they break it out, cameras, plugs, bulbs, strips, power hub, sensors. I, I kind of like that. So here's our camera. We're gonna select that and we're gonna select, is this gonna be wired or is this gonna be wireless? In my case, I'm going to do this wirelessly and we're gonna select next. And now we have to plug in the camera. It's gonna start blinking, letting us know that it's all good to go. Now, what I'm going to recommend, grab yourself the little waterproof washer ahead of time and place that in the power receptacle there and then power on your device. This way you already have the water seal and you don't have to worry about it. So we're just gonna get that right in there, kind of get that around there, plug it in, which I'm gonna adjust so that I know that I'm getting a watertight seal. Kind of look around like that, see it's all the way around and then link it in, here we go. And bringing the camera back into focus over here, we could see that I have a red light, but we want to wait for the red and green blinking like it is starting now. So we're gonna select next. All right, if you're on an Android phone, you are going to have to enable location. So we're gonna select enable while using this app I'll select. And we're gonna go back to next. We have to connect to the Wi-Fi network that this is pushing out. Here we go. I had to do a little finagling, but it's letting me know Tapo wants to temporarily connect to the phone. I'm gonna select connect. It's letting me know that it's successful. And now the two are talking. Notice the light's still blinking there because it's looking for the Tapo device. And sadly I had a notification pop up, but this is what popped up. It says, what network do you want? You can select your network and then password. If you have not used a Tapo device before, you'll plug in your password. And in my case, it's already saved. So, and it appears that they have not fixed this portion, which I dislike greatly, which is showing you your network and password in plain text. Tapo, fix that. I hear the camera making some noise. So that's going to be it connecting itself to the Wi-Fi network. So it is connecting to your network. We're still blinking green and red right there. Ooh, now we're kind of on a steady amber. Wi-Fi connected. And you probably heard what? Okay, there will be no doubt that you understand when this is connected to your network. It is rather loud. I'm going to leave this page because I've had this experience with Tapo products. They tend to get hung up on the connection phase here. We can clearly see that the green light is on. You can see Tapo camera is now connected with my Alex A devices. But as I was saying, the camera light is clearly green. This is still in the connecting phase. It did audibly tell me that it was connected. Oh, here we go. Now it's pairing to Tapo device. At least the screen changed with the the language. All right, I tap the screen and it changed. So here we're going to name our device and there I'm gonna be super clever with my naming. Where is this located? It gives you a couple of pre-built, but we're going to call this as this camera is going to be located outside. You can even pick a icon for the device. Looks like by default, it was on that baby thing right there. I'm gonna select that as my icon and move on. Ready to go at this time. I can select sounds good, or I can go through the mount to wall and it will give me the directions for mounting this to a wall. I'm gonna skip that as they do cover that in the instructions. So we're gonna say, sounds good. We have the option to start their free Tapo care service. So that's a 30 day free trial. I might come back and try that a little later. I'm going to skip for now. You can always go to cameras and turn it back on. So I'm gonna say, got it. Next, it's letting us know we should put a micro SD card in here. We can get up to a 256 gig card and it's going to require us to take off the little door right there. So I'm going to say, got it, because we're gonna need that for the local storage. Here is an auto update for the firmware check. It's letting you know it'll do that between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m., which is kind of nice. It'll be updating off cycle. So I'm gonna say, got it, and we'll just leave that alone. And here we have the Tapo C325WB, and we're just gonna turn that there. And it's kind of walking you through some of the important features that this has. 2K resolution, the super night vision color, smart AI detection, and customizable sounds and alarms. We're gonna say, got it, and that loads it up, and there we we go. That is the setup process for the Tapo C325WB. Now, not all outdoor cameras are powered by plugging them in. A lot of them are battery powered because, well, you can place them a little easier than something like this that requires you to be plugged in. There is a big advantage that something that is wired has over a battery powered outdoor camera. And that is how the camera detects movement and then sends you a notification. With a battery powered camera, you have something called a PIR sensor. That is a heat based motion sensor, meaning that 
the camera is in a hibernated state until something that has a heat signature passes in front of it, and then it sends you a notification. With a powered outdoor camera, what you get is pixel-based motion sensing and notification. So what this is doing is looking and comparing pictures in real time. And then if something happens to move in frame, it notices that. And depending on if you're using the smart AI features to tell it only tell me if it's a person, pet, or vehicle, then it sends you a notification almost instantaneously, which is the big selling factor for powered outdoor cameras. But because it is plugged in all the time, I'm always concerned with how much power a camera actually uses. In my testing, in privacy mode, which we'll talk about a little later, it uses 3.0 watts of power. When idling, meaning it's on, actively connected to your Wi-Fi, it uses 3.3 watts of power. And in the night mode, with the LEDs on at maximum, it uses 4.7 watts of power. Now, this sits a little higher than middle of the road for an outdoor camera, but it is because of the internal processing and that enhanced colored night vision that you're getting those power numbers. They are by no means bad numbers, but I want you to be aware of how much power something like this actually utilizes, especially if you're comparing those numbers to the Tapo C320WS. These are higher, but you get more processing in here. One of the things with a camera like this that you should be considering, I said it had the Wi-Fi antennas. Well, that means that this camera connects directly to your Wi-Fi access point. Unlike some outdoor cameras, especially battery powered ones that require there to be an extra hub, so another peripheral for you to keep track of, this camera connects directly to your Wi-Fi with no hub needed. In some ways, that is good. In some ways, it's bad. So good, no extra peripheral. Bad, if you happen to have a lot of things on your Wi-Fi network, like I do, if you don't have a robust enough Wi-Fi access point, you could bog it down by adding more things to the network. Not saying that this bogs it down, but if you are an avid IoT enthusiast such as myself, just be mindful of that. I described how the camera sends you a notification. Part of that is a reduction in false alarms. How does it do that? How does it know that it's a person or a pet or a car? What about activity zone? Maybe I only wanna know, pay attention to this area over here and ignore everything else. How about HDR for your video instead of just regular 2K video. Hardware is all well and good, but all of those features and settings that we're talking about are done through the application. So why don't we take a look at all of the features and settings that we have for this camera that make it leaps and bounds above anything else that I've tested currently on the market. This is the Tapo application for the Tapo C325WB, as we could see right here on our main home screen when we first land on the application. We're seeing all of the cameras that we have with Tapo. So if you have other cameras, they'll appear here. What we can notice in the upper left-hand corner, it says my home. If I select that, I can toggle between multiple homes if I happen to have them. In my case, I only have one. Over here, we have an envelope with a red dot that indicates that there is a motion alert or a notification that I should address. And then over here, the plus sign, that is going to be to add another Tapo device to your Tapo account. I'm gonna select my notifications here and you can see it lists out both of my cameras. In this case, we're gonna look at my garage for the C325W and here, it's going to list what it's seen. We can see red dots indicate that those are things that I have not yet addressed or looked at. And by selecting one, it will open it up and show me this timeline view. And we're gonna pause that right there because that is a person coming into frame, that is me. But we're gonna get back to this screen a little later. This is one of the things that Tapo changed uh, that I'm not sure how I feel about, but we're gonna talk about it when we get to that area. I will state for the purposes of this review, I am not using the paid subscription service at all. These are going to be all free to you with Tapo. So selecting our Tapo camera right here, it is going to bring up the live feed for this camera. Again, starting at the top of the screen, it is showing what the video quality is from this camera. Right now it's 2K. If I select this, I can select either 720 or 2K holding that, or I can leave it on what it is right now, which is auto allowing it to auto switch between the two depending on bandwidth. To the right of that, we have a light indicator. If I tap on this, now I have turned on the two bright LEDs and here it goes, a uh, notification, something was obstructing. Right now I have chosen to turn on the LED lights on this camera and you can see there's a countdown timer there. That's because we can actually select how long that stays on for so that we don't waste power or forget it. But I'm going to toggle it off again. You notice right there, it changes back to daytime mode because you saw a little white light there that's indicating that it's going into its night mode for better viewing. 
That is the sprocket for settings. We'll get to that a little later. Right here in the lower left-hand corner of our screen, we've got a grid. If I tap on the grid, this will allow us to see multiple Tapo cameras all in one location. Right now, I only have the one as part of this grid, but I can select here and then any of my live cameras I would be able to pick. So here is my other camera. I will say OK. And now I would be able to get two live feeds from both these cameras. Now that camera is taking a little time to boot up, but there we go. Now I can see these are both live and I can view them from here. I can have eight screens of a grid of four. I'm going to go back to my singular one and you see it kind of brings me all the way back here, uh, even though I kind of wanted to go straight to the front. So this is something that they could work on, not having to uh, scroll through everything. Just if I tap on this, bring me back to the first one. You can see you have the ability to have 13 cameras as part of that rotating grid that I was cycling through. To the right of that is a camera icon. Selecting that, well, that takes a still frame of whatever I'm looking at live. Same with the recording. If I select the record button, it is now recording what is being visibly shown right now. I can turn that off and those get saved. As you see, they're sending them down to the playback and memories error. We'll talk about that a little later. Right here, I have volume. You'll notice that this is the camera's microphone volume. Right now, I have it maxed out. However, the recommended is a little lower than that. It's about there. User preference, find out what works best for you, but that is where you would toggle that. Right here, we have the ability to expand to full screen mode. It is also accessible if we just have the gyroscope enabled on our smartphone. As you saw, I just kind of shifted it and went back, but that's what that does. So I waited until it was a little darker to show you this part and we'll make this full screen so you see that that adjusts as well you'll notice that there are no ir adjustments later on because this only does color night vision the one thing i dislike about this particular camera is when i double tap you see right there it, it zooms in all the way i would rather that it gives you an incremental step up in zooming because there are some times that maybe I don't want to look right into my neighbor's house. Double tapping does pull that back out, but here you can see this is actually starting to get twilight where I am. And you notice it's very colorful. You're not missing anything. If I turn on the light, you see over there in my car, it popped on and then right there, that bush is kind of showing light from this as well. Now, if I bring it over here, come up to the settings, and we go to video quality, which I'll show you later, and change that to high dynamic, and come back, swap it, and there you can see with the light on in high dynamic range. So I just wanted to wait until it was dark to show you that, as well as give you a little example here of what that colored night vision looks like. Coming down, we have our talk. Selecting this brings up the talk ability. However, in the upper right hand corner here, we have some settings, and that is the camera's microphone and the camera speaker. This will allow you to adjust those right before you talk to somebody. And in order to, you have to press and hold. So right now, my neighbors are hearing me talk through the camera. So I'm gonna stop doing that. If I scroll down, you'll notice that there's this ad for the Tapo storage everywhere. I can remove that if I don't want to see that. Normally there will be clips down there. I'm going to select the down button right here, and that takes that away. You notice the space now underneath is not congested with that sign up for Tapo. Again, if I was using the service, I would have the ability to access my cloud clips right here. We're gonna come over to voice call. Selecting this will allow you to connect in real time. So notice I don't have to press and hold. I'm in an active conversation right now with the people outside who are probably thinking I'm crazy. I can mute my microphone so they don't hear me anymore, but the conversation could still happen. I could hear what they're saying if I wanted to, or I could also do this, speaker is off meaning the speaker is not going to talk to me anymore. I'm going to hang up the call and that brings me out of it. I'm gonna pop back in there only to show you very quickly. I'm gonna mute my mic so people don't think I'm crazy. Over here, we have these same controls that we did before. Always remember, if you're in voice call, to end the call before closing. Word, word of the wise. Privacy mode, selecting that will turn the camera into privacy mode, meaning you cannot actively view it. It is not actively recording anything. You're just gonna get this blank screen. So we're gonna exit privacy mode to pull ourselves out of that and turn the camera back on so we can actually see it. Here we have our alarm off. Well, I wanna turn that on. Well, now my camera's making a noise outside, so people are definitely thinking there's a problem over here. I'm gonna turn that off very quickly. We have tag on or tag off. What is tag on and tag off? If you happen to have a person walk through here when the tag is on or a pet walk through here, there will be a tag box around that individual saying this is a person or this is a pet. 
kind of like this. But this is only for the live view. This does not do for your recording. So just know tagging only while things are actively being viewed. Here we have our Tapo Care. That is the thing that I kind of swiped away at the bottom. But bringing us into that, there is a 30 day free trial that you get with any of the Tapo cameras. However, if you want, here are the prices for having that care for a month by month basis or Yearly, what do you get with Tapo Care? You get unlimited cloud storage of your clips, exclusive AI detection, rich notifications with snapshots, meaning when you get a notification, you don't just get a text alert saying, hey, there's something you should look at. You would get an image as well. And then smart short, classify cloud videos based on what's in them, what type of event they are. That is kind of handy, but not necessary, but that's all through Tapo Care. If you want to pay for a monthly subscription, the camera itself is 100% usable and functional, very functional without that subscription. Moving down, we're going to come to the playback and memories. Here we could see playback. If I scroll through my timeline, it's showing me people. And that right there is me walking my garbage can. I can select any one of these and it will start playing that selection. The thing I like about this, I'm gonna pause momentarily, is the timeline here. If I pinch to zoom, you'll notice that people are actually green on the timeline. That matches this. Now, you may be asking yourself, well, why is this blue back here and this is white? Well, right here, I was testing out the continuous recording mode to the SD camera. Currently, what I was doing was testing the clip mode. So the white space means that nothing was recorded and these colorations are letting me know, hey, these are things that you should pay attention to. I can cycle through days. So if I bring myself back, notice orange is just motion. I have the blue, which is indicating continuous recording. So I could go back and do that myself if I wanted to. If I do a person, again, we can hinge to zoom to zoom in on that. This is one of the things that I wish Tapo had corrected in the application. And I don't know why, but they changed it with the notifications area. The only way now to download this clip of me testing the camera is actually to either start playing from one of these detections and take a snapshot of a photo, hit the record button. That record button will then record what's happening on screen, just like we had in that other screen where I was showing you, hey, this is the live feed, here's the record button. Once it's recorded, it then goes over to our memory section. Here you can see a bunch of memories. From the memories, I can select an individual clip and then I can share, favorite, download, or delete from here. I don't know why Tapo did not correct this from the last time I reviewed these cameras with this particular functionality in the app. In fact, they downgraded a little bit of that functionality from the notifications area because the notification before would let you download that particular notification. Instead, you are brought to the playback area so that you can watch it and then record it. I have a strong feeling that if you pay for the Tapo service, then that notification will bring you right to the source file, which would allow you to download. It is a small gripe, but a data point that I want you to be aware of because there's a lot of good features in the Tapo application, but there are definitely some points that could be worked on. I'm gonna select back because that was our memories area. So that is everything that we can do for camera control for the Tapo C325WB. But that does not mean that we are out of options. We talked about the sprocket icon up here. Selecting this brings us into the application settings for this camera. This is where you do all the customization for this camera. And there's a lot to do in here. So let's start at the top. Right here, we have the camera's name. Selecting that, well, it's taking an image from the most current thing that it sees. I can select an icon to represent this. It's got a lot of icons that you can choose from. You have the naming convention. Tap in there, you can change the name. We have the Wi-Fi network. So if I needed to change that, I could do that right there. We have signal strength and then IP and MAC address, which I will hide, hardware version and firmware version. If I select firmware, this is what I was talking about. I can manually check or right here, I have auto update. If I select auto update, I can specify a date and time that this will automatically go and look for a firmware update. I love that feature, it's great. There is another place which we'll touch on as we go through here that allows you to update the firmware automatically during a set time. Within our area here, moving down, we have location. You have some preset locations or I can type in a custom one. You saw that during setup, time zone much as it sounds time zone. Another prompt to try the Tapo care. Invert image means taking the image and flipping it upside down in case you were mounting this in an odd angle. You have your LED status light on or off, depending on again, where you have this mounted, you might wanna have the indicator on or off. Privacy zones, these are really cool. If I turn on a privacy zone, hey, here's what the live feed shows, setting up a privacy zone. 
I can turn my thing to landscape or I can say add a zone and then I get a little box. And what I can do with this box is manipulate it and move it. Well, over there, that happens to be my neighbor and they leave their lights on sometimes. So if I select that, well, guess what? Now there's a black privacy zone set up there and the camera will not record anything. And if I open up the camera, I don't see anything in that live view right there, which is very nice that without having to pay for, you can have that. And you notice I can have quite a few different privacy zones. I'm going to clear all of them because we don't need them right now. And I'm going to turn that off right there and we're going to go back. Next we have turn on spotlight at night right now. I have it turned off because the reason you're getting this camera is the awesome colored night vision that you get with this. Now, currently where I'm testing this, I have street light and my neighbor's lights and it looks gorgeous, so I don't need this. However, if I turn on the light, well, that just means that the spotlight will be turned on. You can see right there, it kind of shows you the difference based on having the spotlight turn on and off. Now I'm gonna leave the spotlight on because there's some options later on that I need to show you, but I need that on to do that. Spotlight settings. Right here we have brightness. You can set this all the way from 0% to 100%. 100% is gonna be super bright. And again, it's trying to show you what that would look like. But again, right now it's daytime for me. So this isn't gonna show as well. And then here we have the duration. So remember we saw that countdown timer. Well, if you activate it yourself, you're gonna have that five minute countdown down timer show up. However, if motion or a person sets it off, you're also going to have those LED spotlights stay on for a set amount of time. Minimum is five minutes, maximum is 30 minutes. I wish that they would allow you to have an option to customize because I would like a little shorter than five minutes. That's splitting hairs. That's all done through here uh, and in our spotlight settings. Next, we have our detections and alerts. If I select this, we have the ability to have motion alerts and that's just going to be any motion, anything can set it up. You have a sliding scale as to how sensitive that would be. But here we can also set up an active zone. You see this red haze might be a little tricky to see on the camera, but red haze right there. If I select active zone, I can customize just how much I want the camera to focus on and I can add multiple zones. So if I want this, this, but nothing in the middle, I can do that. And we're just gonna go back and turn off motion because I don't want everything setting this off. I only want specific things. And that is where the AI detection comes in. Here I have AI detection for person. Again, sensitivity slider. And you're going to have that for everything. Person, pet, which is what they call animal. Notice it's got the tag around it. So you can do the beta tag for animals and then vehicle. Now, for me, because this is facing the street, I do not have this on, but I can turn that on. And again, motion slider, letting me know how sensitive I would like that to be. And that's why I have motion detection off because I'm using all the AI detection. Here we have line cross. This is something that I played with before and I like it. It makes a little line that says, hey, if somebody or something crosses this, let me know. My problem with this was even headlights, if they flash, they would send a notification. The one thing I do kind of like about this, if I go into the settings, notice the direction of this arrow. I have switch direction, coming or going, let me know. Only going this way, let me know. Only coming in, let me know. That is a very cool feature. And then I can make this larger and, and kind of swivel it around like that. If I want to, I can add another one right there. I'm gonna delete that one. But this switch direction is, is really nice. I kind of like the fact that they let you pick which way that boundary goes, as well as you can set up a schedule right now everything is set for on. If I come up to edit, I can say, yeah, don't turn it on during these times. And then I can select all or I can clear all. I'm just gonna leave that as is and go back. Camera tampering, this will send you a notification alert if tampering is detected with the camera. I like the update that they've done with the application and this camera. It's not as sensitive as it used to be because bugs used to set it off. Now I have not had any tamper alerts unless I'm out there like actively rocking the camera back and forth myself. Detection tagging. This is what we were talking about in that live feed where it says this is a person. So you can do detection tagging and then you can also select whether you want it labeled as a person or not. That's what that is. Activity notifications. Well, yes, I want active activity notifications. Do I want Rich? Well, guess what? You have to pay for that. So Rich is going to be sending you a thumbnail screenshot of what was seen without going into the camera first. When would you like this? All day, during the day, during the night, or for a custom duration? I can come in here, customization right here by activating that. And we're just gonna say always, put that back, and then camera alarm on or off. If I select on, well, guess what? This gives us some options. What happens? How does it happen? Alarm type, well, We've got sound and light, so it will sound and flash the lights. We have sound type, we have default, custom, and then we have siren, emergency, and red alert. <laughs> All 
You also have your volume from low to high and normal. I'm going to select back. You have alarm duration. How long does it last? Which is about five seconds. You can have all the way up to 30 or custom and you just really go ham, 30 seconds. Uh, so anywhere in between right there, I could put that back to default, which is the five seconds. Well, what do you want to trigger this alarm, people, pets, motion, camera tampering, line detection, vehicle detection. You can customize, maybe I only want these two to set the alarm off. Well, now those are the only things that are gonna set the alarm off, which I appreciate. I like the fact that they give you that level of customization and then alarm schedule all day, during the day, during night and custom, just like we had before. I'm going to turn the alarm off because I do not want my neighbors to hate me more than they already do. That was detections and alerts. Now we're coming down to micro SD card. Here we can see micro SD the card is set for looping, meaning the oldest clips will be written over as new clips are added. Or if you have continuous video recording, as it reaches the end, it will just roll back and start over. I do like the fact that I can turn off loop recording if I wanted to and manually remove the SD card. That's going to be extra work because you have to take it down and access that SD card panel. Formatting down there will format SD card, meaning it will wipe everything that's on it. So be very careful with that. And then you can actually see used space on the SD card there. Selecting back, we have recording schedule. Well, right now I have continuous setup and you can see this block of orange. Those are detection readings only and then do not record. Make any changes, we simply come up to edit and then we select what we want to do. So I'm going to do this and if I double tap on one, it clears it and then triple tap, puts it back to what it was or I can clear all clear everything. And that is setting up a schedule right there. I'm going to go back video quality. If I select this, well, this is going to be how the video is presented to you. So right here, I can force it to always do the 2k. I can force it to always do 720. They call it data savings, but it is still considered HD and auto will toggle between the two based on your bandwidth. HDR mode, well, here you can see from the image, well, right now I have HDR off. What happens when I turn it on? It helps enhance specific areas. This is going to be a by use case option for you. Where I currently have mine, having the HDR on during the daytime makes things look a little darker than I would like, but at night, it really helps to bring out those night clips bringing in, again, because it's pretty much enhancing shadows right there. It's an option, it's there for you. That is the uh, big thing with this is the customization that you have access to. That was all video quality, advanced settings. Well. Privacy mode, hey, we did that before. This is just another way to access that. Record audio. Well, some places it is illegal to record audio with your video. So here's how you could turn that on or off. Power line frequency. Well, you have the ability to change this uh, again if you want to. Customization is key. If you don't know what that is, do stay out of there and leave it on auto. Device account. Well, you can create a account just for this camera. Not necessary, but it's there want to show you that. Voice call mode, we have standard mode, or we can do compatibility mode, which ensures stability. So it kind of lowers your bandwidth automatically doing that if you select that option. On-screen displays, well, do you want the timestamp? How would you like the timestamp displayed? Do you want text to display? That's all going to be when you're actively looking through or on your recordings. If I toggle this on, what I like is this is customizable. I can have that say anything I want. So I can actually have it say garage, back patio, something like that as part of the image file itself. So very good for surveillance if you need it. Tapo logo, if you want the Tapo logo as part of the video recording on or off right there, we're gonna select back. Those were our on screen displays. Diagnostic, this is useful if you want Tapo to help you diagnose an issue. If you have this turned off, it won't gather data, but that also means there's nothing that you can send to Tapo to help you out with that. And that was all of our advanced settings. Moving on, we have the mounting guide. This will walk you through the mounting process for this. So I'm not going to show you all of it, but that's what that is. Share device, you can share this camera with a specific person. Well, you know right here, they'll have limited access, but they will also need their own Tapo account. So I can send it to them, but they need their own Tapo account and the Tapo app in order to be able to see my camera. There we have auto reboot on or off. Sometimes you want to reboot your camera automatically. You can do that from there. Feedback here. I can send feedback directly to Tapo. I can reboot my camera manually right there, or I can remove the camera. Coming back, we have our Tapo camera. That was everything that we could do for the settings as well as the camera itself. Quickly, I'm going to back out to the Tapo app itself because there have been some changes here since I last did my review. We have home right there, which is what we're on. I can select cameras, which is just gonna show me, hey, here are all my camera feeds. I can select detection mode where I'm home or I'm away, and then I can add more cameras right from there by hitting the plus sign. Here, if I had vacuums, they would all show up in one spot. Smart, 
Well, do I want to set up a routine with any of my lighting or cameras? I have shortcuts and automations. That's all done through Smart. And then me, as you might imagine, is more of your tap out account information, but also a singular place that you can look to update all of your firmware for all of your cameras in one place. So that has been everything that you can do with the Tapo app for the Tapo C325WB. There you saw, there is a lot, and I mean a lot that you can do to customize this camera, to make it your own, to make it so that you only get notified when you wanna get notified. Yes, you did see that there is a cloud subscription throughout my testing. None of my testing utilize that cloud subscription. Everything that I've done with this camera has been using the free services. This camera is more than functional without having to pay for the extra Tapo services. And let me tell you, there are not a lot of cameras out there that are like that. One of the biggest things that I appreciate is the tamper settings. They have vastly improved that compared to the previous Tapo camera that I tested. I have not had any false triggers with this at all. Really, greatly appreciate that they took the time to fix that because that was one of my biggest complaints with the previous iteration of this camera. Hardware, all well and good. Application, great. Make or break a camera, audio test. How does it sound? If it sounds like garbage, you're not gonna use it. Let's take a listen to what the audio from this camera actually sounds like. Audio test, Tapo Outdoor, Super Color. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Peter Piper picks a pack of pickled peppers. S1, S2, S3, and test. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Test one, test two, Test three, Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. And test now. There you heard. Not bad, again, for the size of this camera. Video quality. You want to know how good that 2K is. Well, because this is only a 1080 video, I don't want to downscale the 2K video to put in here. So over there in the corner, there will be a link to the video that has the 2K video samples in all its glory. Night shots, day shots, two different types of colored night vision. I even got a little rain at night to show you what this looks like and what you can expect for the video quality of this. Because to me, that's actually a little more important than audio because some places you can't record audio, but video, video you're always gonna to wanna to have access to. What I can tell you is the color night vision is impressive. One of the big things that happens with night vision, whether it's colored or using IR, is something called ghosting, meaning you see a shadow of whatever object is moving through frame. This camera has the least amount of ghosting that I've ever seen for a camera in night vision. In fact, it's almost non-existent. In some cases, when moving very quickly through frame, there was a little bit, but I was super impressed how the video actually came out from this. Again, take a look over there once the review is done. For those of you that like your voice assistants, whether that be Google Home or Alexa, yes, the Tapo C325WB is compatible with both. So if you have those systems and you'd like to see your video right on those peripherals, you can do that without a problem. Overall, what are my thoughts of this camera? If you haven't gotten the idea, I have been super impressed with the colored night vision that this has. But also think, three person detection with object tagging, which again, I have not seen in any other camera on the market currently. I've seen tagging for motion, but not this is a person, this is a pet, this is a vehicle. This is the first camera that I've seen that type of tagging with. The fact that it has what I'm gonna call that next level of colored night vision, which other companies are going to be playing catch up with. I very rarely say that. Only a handful of times have I said something is the industry standard that others are going to be playing catch up with. And this colored night vision is that technology. Feature set to size, power usage. This has been one of the strongest outdoor cameras that I have tested to date. If TP-Link did not send me this for review, I would look to pick this up for myself because it is just that good of a camera. I know you might be hesitant because this product was provided to me for a review, but I assure you, it really is that good. Even at the price point, what you would expect to pay for a wired outdoor camera that does not have all the features that this has. And again, the big selling point of this camera is that outdoor colored night vision. Let me leave you with this example to entice you to go check out that other video. This is what the colored night vision from this camera looks like. As you can see, it is colored. But here, this is a snapshot of what the area actually looked like, how dark it was not coming through here. If you're not impressed, I don't know what will. If you haven't gotten the idea, I really like this camera. I strongly recommend checking out this camera if you're looking for a wired outdoor camera with outstanding 
colored night vision that gives you person, pet, vehicle detection for free, object tagging in the video itself, local storage. I could go on. This is an excellent camera. You should check it out. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.